Hi, everybody. This is Stoney Jackson. I'm going to be with Zach and Dustin on Two Dollar Lake. I want you guys to tune in and listen. It's going to be fun. Check it out. Stoney Jackson. Yes. Thank you for being on Two Dollar Late Fee. Hey, thank you guys for inviting me down here, man. This is really cool. Yeah, it's an honor to have you on the show. It's, it's awesome you. to have you. You guys and, are giving me chills. Too many compliments. You man. look, as we say, you know, you walked in here. I'm like, what are you, like 38 now? And you're like, <laughs> uh, you're like I'm not. And uh, you look amazing. Thank you. You look amazing. So wow. whatever you're doing, share it with us. Wow. Well, uh, just after go to the sleep show. and wake up. <laughs> How many hours a night do you get? Sleep, sleep yeah, man it depends sometimes i i rarely get any what yeah so sometimes. you're one of the like i can you function on two hours yeah i can function on two hours but it's bad okay but so i can't function how many did you get last night hmm i probably got about five to six five to okay. six well, yeah you know yeah sounds about right i get that same amount anytime i go to sleep really early if i go to bed early let's say nine o'clock yeah i always wake up about Three thirty, four o'clock in the morning, and then I'm up till like and six or seven. To the then day, that's when I boom. Oh, I hit it. wait, six or seven a.m. Yeah, and then so I you fall back asleep. Okay, wow. And are you productive in those hours? No, no. Okay, so it's more like whatever. <laughs> just laying there, man. Okay, just, yeah. Have you always been that way? No. Okay, so that was something fairly recent, or sort of in the yeah, in the past few years actually. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we're obviously a little bit younger than you, and we look a lot older than you. But no, uh, you don't. But you, you, you. <laughs> I feel older as we're talking. Well, you had said, and we can get to that later. But you said you took a break from acting for a while. Yeah. And and but your career goes a little bit back. Yeah, it does, man. I started when I was a teenager. Wow. Yeah. And Growing, as a matter yeah. of fact, one of the first parts that I ever had was a guest star role on a sh on a TV series called The Righteous Apples. Okay. And I don't know if you know anything about um uh he was a pretty big producer for a while. His name was Topper Carew. Okay. Mm. And Michael T. Williamson, who starred in right. uh, Streets of Fire with yep. me, right? Um, he was a regular on the show. Okay. And that's how I met him. So he was a teenager, I was a teenager, and that was yeah. like my first like kind of main guest star kind of role on the yeah, show. Yeah, it's called Righteous... The Righteous Apples. The Righteous Apples? What yeah. was it about? Um, It was about... It was kind of like a... Uh, what's that show? The Saved by the Bell? Yeah. It was like a Saved yeah. by the Bell kind of show, but before Saved by the Bell. Okay. Uh, like E.G. Daly, you know, yeah, she know was on the show. Yep, she yep. was a regular on the show. Michael T. Williamson. I can't remember who the other who the other cast people were, but... um. Those are three heavy hitters right there. You I'm said like, okay, oh, like you didn't know it. You, no. Do you not know it? No, I don't. Oh, this, yeah. is, the this, is, this is significant. If Zach doesn't know it and Zach doesn't own it, that means it's it's It's, it's out. a pretty it, big deal because I know my huge, stuff. It's a huge deal. And Robert said you saw Winston Poole tonight. You guys was going to just let him hang there. Yeah, you got the picture. Why, James? Why me? You know, I thought he was jiving. I couldn't believe that even you'd use a brother. He ain't no brother. Now, I was doing Uncle Tommy here a favor, making him martyr for the cause. What the hell cause are you fighting for, Jay? Man, I'm ticked off at the way they treat us at Sherwin. Until I can get us back to our old school, man, I'm not going to let it rest. And if you got to come down, brother. Let me get Michael yeah. T to try to come in here and do this but yeah come on now he's on the road a lot well we want to do a sorrel reunion we gotta get all the, the sorrels in oh. we want to do all the songs <laughs> you know it'd be easy to get me grand and um and uh, michael t but i don't know robert and he's yeah i don't know <laughs> he does, he not, a difficult. does he not like fun you think <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what it is <laughs> right. with you, i don't know Wait, i'm just saying it might be a little difficult but he may do it no but it's but it's true you guys you've, you've all had significantly different careers um since and robert was was very very focused on comedy for a while and yeah and he was focused on directing, on directing more yeah. so yeah. the comedy yeah um he was filming what was that movie he did hollywood, hollywood shuffle. shuffle yeah he was doing that on the weekends while we were shooting streets of fire no kidding and when we were doing streets of fire we were contracted for 22 or 23 weeks okay. right which is a long time it's a long time yeah, yeah that's like a yeah. half that's like six months yeah Okay, but we didn't film the entire time. Mm -hmm. What Universal wanted to do was they wanted to make sure that no actors in between the times that they were going to be down were going to go and get other parts. Mm -hmm. So they took care of us. 22 weeks, man. That was that was sweet. 
They don't do that anymore now, do they? I don't know. Yeah. Probably yeah. not. But yeah, 22 weeks on a, on a movie, on a feature, yeah. Universal, that's that was big. Yeah. And they took wild. care of us. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, we did well. You are now you're back on television, right? And a TV series, uh, or you you did a TV series fairly recently, right? And but but you got your start on TV as well. Yeah, and sitcoms, episodic television. Started out doing commercials. Yeah, okay. I did a lot of commercials. Were you always want? Was that did you always want to be an actor when you were a kid? Or yes, since I was I probably. Well, when I was growing up, I grew up in um, rural Virginia. And for the first, I would say, up until fourth grade, mm-hmm. I lived with my grandparents. Okay. And my mom, uh, when I was first born, I, you know, uh, my mom got married because she was pregnant. And it was one of those pregnancies back in the days where you had to get married to the, the guy that got you pregnant because it was Shotgun not wedding. like Yeah, it's not yeah. like it is yeah. today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So my parents my biologicals weren't really that in love with each other. Uh, My mom was always in love with a childhood sweetheart who his mother and her mother were best friends since they were kids. Oh, wow. That's how rural that part of Virginia is. So everybody like knew each other. So my mom was always in love with him. And then I guess they had a period where they weren't together and then she messed around with, you know, my biological father and ended up getting pregnant when she was 17 years Uh old. So she had me. And then... um. We lived, we first lived in Maryland with him for about two years, Maryland and DC. And then um, they got divorced. And then my mother and I moved back into the house with my grandparents in Virginia in a little town called Dinwiddie, which is outside of um, uh, Petersburg in Richmond. Okay. Which, whereas I was born in Richmond. So. Um, wow, back in the day. Yeah. So then my mom ended up marrying the guy. Right? The original guy. Yeah. The original sweetheart. Okay. Yeah. Nice. And they have two daughters, which are my two half sisters. And then he wanted to go to med school. Now his father is uh very well was very well to do. Especially being back in that time, his family mm-hmm. had money. So they were able to have cars, televisions, and all that stuff back in the early sixties and the late fifties, you know, when my parents grew mm-hmm. up. Yeah. And um he had money, but his father was very stingy. And my dad always wanted to be a doctor. So he actually put himself, he and my mom, put himself through med school at University of Virginia. Wow. And Amazing. so, yeah. So right before he did that, he was going to school in um, in uh, Portsmouth, Virginia. And okay. when they moved oh, there, yeah. I didn't want to go. So I stayed with my grandparents. So my mom, two of my young sisters, and, and um, my stepdad moved to um, Portsmouth and they lived there and I stayed with my grandparents. And that brings me back to say this. When I was there, I remember when I was about six or seven years old, my grandparents bought me a TV, a little tiny white box, black and white TV. And remember TV used to go off at like 11 o'clock, 12 yeah. o'clock at night and you get that boop. <laughs> and every night I would listen to, um, I would uh, listen to, oh, sorry about that okay. noise. I would listen to um, Ray Charles do that. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, beautiful. Oh, man, that was the, oh, that was my favorite song in the world. So I would listen to that every night. Louis Armstrong At six, seven yeah. years old, <laughs> midnight, watching TV until it turned off, and then I would go to sleep. They wouldn't even know it because I would be in the room. Right, I had my just own sneaking. Little yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So because of watching so much TV, I used to watch Lassie and General Ben and all that stuff. General I always ben. wanted to be an actor mm. from from that moment. Love that. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And I always knew when I would watch them, you know, uh Opie and um and uh what do you call it? My my three sons, okay. all those shows when yeah. I was a little kid. Andy Griffith and all that. Yeah, all that stuff, man. I always knew I could do what those guys are doing. Wow. But I never knew the business was the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> you never do. They never do yeah. until you're in it. You're like, oh, this is the business. That's the reoccurring theme we have on our show a lot of times is when people come on, they say, you know, I really wanted to be an actor, really wanted to be a performer. But then the business side of it was the not unfun side, you know. But mm-hmm. but but you did you came out come out to LA as a teenager? So this is what happened. Um when my dad went to med school, then I decided to go ahead and move back in with them because we got, um, uh, we moved to Charlottesville. Okay. And at that time, the Navy had a program where they would pay for 
anyone's education that was like med students, mm-hmm. okay. they would pay for their education as long as you gave them when you graduated at least eight years serving. Oh, wow. Right? Okay. So, eight years? Yeah. Wow. So my dad graduated from med school and he did his internship and his residency at, um, Beth- uh, well, the internship was done at Bethesda, Maryland. So we moved to Bethesda. Okay. And, um, um, so when they when he became a naval officer, that's what they did. They made him an officer. Wow. So things like went for sure. Yeah, because yeah, totally. we were we were really poor at first. And then when that happened, got into the Navy and as an officer, he didn't have to go in and enlist it or anything like that. He went in as an officer. He went in as an officer. Yeah. And did he and he could be stationed where he where he wanted? Well, what happened was he did his his four years in um internship. And then when he did his residency, we moved to Pensacola, Florida, to the Naval Air Station down okay. there. And then okay. after he was done there, we had a choice to go to either Rota, Spain, the Philippines, or Long Beach. <laughs> I always there's, wanted to be an actor. Yeah. The so choice. when I heard Long Beach, yeah. I'm like, man, that's right yeah. next to LA. LBC. Never been to California ever before. Yeah. And I talked them you, into you moving talked. to Long Beach. Wow. When I was a kid, when I was like yeah. about... Oh Probably my 13, 14 God. years old. They must have loved you so much. Yeah, we moved to Long Beach. That's where we've been ever since. Wow. That's how I got That's out That's amazing. Here. We go to That's Spain, how, we yeah. go to the Philippines. Like, no. Yeah. And then I didn't know anything about how to get into the business. Of course so not. I yeah. was looking in newspapers all the time, yeah. looking yeah. for, you know, acting, uh, just whatever I could yeah. find. Yeah. And I found this place called Caroline Leonetti LTD. It was like a, a kind of like an acting class. Okay. And as well as... Um, they taught you how to take care of yourself and all this kind of stuff. And they showed you how to go about, you know, getting an agent when you graduated out of that class, uh-huh. which I think was probably two or three months long. Mm-hmm. And that's how I got my pictures. That's how I found um, how to get an agent. I this one much, class out of Long yeah, Beach? Yeah. No, it was in uh, Hollywood. In it Hollywood. was in Hollywood. Yeah. Okay. And at that particular time, we were living in Cerritos. Okay. So um, my family bought a house in Cerritos, California. And um, which is not really that far from LA. And yeah. back then, the traffic wasn't like it is now. Right. No. Right. If you try to go from Cerritos now, it'd take you two hours. Yeah. Right? <laughs> People don't get that. People but back then, I could, get, I could get to LA, I could get to yeah. Hollywood in about 20, 25 minutes. Yeah. yeah. Oh my Sounds God. about yeah. right. <laughs> in, in traffic. Yeah. You could do that now about three yeah. in the morning, I think. Maybe. Man, LA is like Manila, Philippines. I was there a couple of years ago, and oh my God, I, I swear to you, this is no joke. If you want to get in a car, get in the cab, or whatever, yeah. to go. Four miles into mm-hmm. that city, it will take you over two hours to do it. Oh, it's brutal. But isn't that yeah. dependent on certain times of day? No. Feel, no? There's, there's no logic? Same same here? Because I feel like it's all the time here now. And you know where else is bad is uh, Ho Chi Minh City. Oof. I mean, oh, the, my God. Yeah. It, it's crazy over there. Traffic. Yeah, we, we were talking offline wait, right when we first kind of made our introductions <clears throat> to each other, and you were saying you travel a lot. You, tra- you still travel to this day a lot? Yes. Okay. Yeah, places all over the world. Yeah, any particular place that you uh, fancy more than the, than another? No, not well. I don't know. Not really. Italy's really beautiful. I've never been. Italy's really got to go to the motherland. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> right. My 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 ten yeah. percent motherland. Yeah. I guess, yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. But, no, he, but um, yeah, here you are, like getting into acting as a young child, teenager, mm-hmm. really. And and during an era when, like, we're talking, it was way different than it is now, mm-hmm. obviously. So you get your headshots, you find out where to go, mm-hmm. just start auditioning, start hustling? I got a commercial agent first. Okay. Um, and that wasn't by design. I just saw this agency. I submitted pictures to these agencies, yeah. and yeah. then I got calls to come in and see them. And so I went into uh, this agency. At the time, they were sort of new. Mm-hmm. They were called Sutton, Barth, and Venari. Okay. And SBB. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're like the biggest agency now yeah. with commercials, especially commercials. Yeah. And so- We do um, voiceover. SBB is yeah, top. They're yeah. huge. Yeah. But I got with them when they were like just starting yep. out. That's wild. That's yeah. Awesome. So they picked me up, and they started sending me out. On my first audition, which was, I think, a McDonald's uh, French fries commercial. Nice. And I was the lead in that commercial. I Your got first my, audition. I got my first booked. audition. Yep. McDonald's. Yeah. Bless you. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm loving yeah. it. Oh, and sorry. then from there, like every week, I was booking a commercial. And all of them were national. All of them. And check this out. Remember Roots? Yeah. Okay. Everybody in their mama was watching Roots. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I don't know. You guys may be too young for it. I was watching Roots. I mean, did I'm, you watch it? I I I didn't watch it really, no, but I was raised in front very of the TV. Familiar. Roots was huge. It was yeah. huge. Okay. Yeah. So I'm in like 
freshman in high school and or sophomore and that commercial aired primetime had no idea what's coming on we're all watching roots next thing we know i'm like oh <laughs> <laughs> and my yeah. mcdonald's commercial aired when i went to school the that's next awesome. day everybody was like hey man we saw you yeah that's awesome like get off me yeah yeah <laughs> Because nobody awesome. wanted to talk to me at first, you know. I yeah. Right. Like, yeah. That's how it happens. Right. Yeah. Me and my sister at that time, we were like probably out of that school, maybe seven black kids in that entire school. Wow. Yeah. In Long Beach. It was in or Cerritos. Cerritos. In Cerritos. Yeah. 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 Times have changed. <laughs> really? <laughs> I know. A little bit. A little bit. Amazing. Well, and, and, and then you were saying earlier, The Righteous Apples was a show you were on for a couple episodes, but then you from there you went to <clears throat> The White Shadow. Yeah. The first part that I ever actually got theatrically was um, I did an episode. It was a two-hour episode of Quincy with yeah. uh, Jack Klugman. Yeah. And uh, Michael Constantine. Oh, yeah. amazing. Yeah. I remember him? I think amazing. he was on, what, Room 222? Yep. And that was, uh, I had a few scenes with those two guys. Okay. And I was a, like a, a young kid who had overdosed on some drugs or pills or something like mm-hmm. that. Whatever the the cosmetic or drug was, you know, in those days. Yeah. So um, that was my first part. Wow. And then, yeah, I ended up getting that Righteous Apples, which I was like the main guest star lead on that TV series. That was with Michael T. Williamson. Yeah. Which is still my best friend to this day. Oh, nice. Right on. Yeah. He and I have been best friends since that day that we met. That's Unrighteous beautiful. Apples. Yep. That's beautiful. That is he so said, cool. He said, man, I just saw something in you. Mm. That's what he said to me. Oh, that's beautiful. We, yeah. We, we've been this close. He was my best man in my wedding. Yeah. We've been that close. And we still are to this minute. That's, oh, I love that's that. amazing. Yeah. E.G. Daly um, is another one who was in that right. show. Also, and also in Streets of Fire. Yeah. Which is like amazing. So yes. is there a connection as far as you guys, were you, were you randomly auditioning for the same things? Did you, like with you and Michael T, like the fact that you guys both ended up as Sorrells, but were already best, best friends. Did one of you bring another, the other in or was it just? At that particular time, back in those days, you couldn't bring each other into anything. Yeah. We were mm-hmm. just all auditioning for whatever we just, could audition for. Okay. And we were all out there. A lot of times, yeah, we did audition for a lot of the same parts. Yeah. Some I got, some he got. Right. Yeah. And then, of course, other actors out there got stuff too. But I worked a lot, and so did he. That's beautiful. Yeah. I love that. I love that you guys had that relationship and still do to this day. Because mm-hmm. yeah. it shows on screen. <clears throat> like You know when someone, when there's a relationship with people, it, it, it comes, and you have to be friends or something on a, in a movie or TV series, it comes across so much more, like you want to connect more with those people as a viewer. Because you're like, those guys are cool. They're having a good time. There was something about your performance, especially in Streets of Fire, where we were just drawn into that. I'm like, I want to know more about your backstory. I want to see a Sorrell's movie, you know? We had always talked about that. I just don't know what happened. I think it was something that was probably thought about by the studio and Walter Hill Mm -hmm. um, doing a Sorrell's movie because we did get pretty popular from that movie. Yeah, for sure. that song. Yeah. Well, then Robert Townsend made a movie called The Five Heartbeats. And like in my own mind back in the day, I, I, you know, uh, role playing or whatever, I'm like, oh, I'll just call that the band The Sorrells. Yeah. That'll be their story. That's pretty right. much why he did it too, I think. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Right on. I mean, like you, you're the, the it, we were talking about this the other day when I Can Dream About You comes on and you're singing it, your character is. I know Dan Hartman is a legend in his own way, at rest in peace. Yeah. I always associated that voice with you in the movie. Mm -hmm. Everybody. It was hard to detach the two. Yeah. When you got cast for that, did you know that this, obviously this movie was going to be as big as it was? I mean, Um, a cult hit, I guess. It's more, yeah, it became more of a cult hit than it did a box office hit. Right. Didn't open great. Yeah. 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 I think at the time that it opened, it opened uh, against Superman, I think. Yeah. And then also what happened was, there was a huge freeze over on the eastern seaboard. Yes. In the country. It was like one of the was, worst that yes. had ever happened. So that really affected the opening of that movie. The opening weekend was not was yep. not well attended. That's what happened. For and sure. if you don't get if a movie doesn't open well, yeah. You people don't usually go two or three weeks after it's already opened up. Yep. Right. 
That's how they used to do it anyway. <clears throat> it was all about it was all opening weekend. Yeah, like all the time. That's what happened to that movie. That's that's exactly what happened to that movie. Why I got crushed. Well, dare I say, I think it's actually gotten more popular now. Like, yeah, I think so. If you bring up Streets of Fire now, and we are clearly because we're having you on the show and talking about the movie, <laughs> yeah. and we have Michael Perea on, and and Streets of Fire came out the month we're recording this in June. Uh, it it holds up and then some. Mm -hmm. And Dustin and I were saying in our previous episode of the Streets of Fire, when we focused just on the movie, your the Sorrells are really like the heart of that movie in many ways. Like you guys are the most wholesome of the film. There's a lot of gray characters throughout, but you guys are just pure heart. I said the most likable, basically. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I, I wasn't, you know, just pulling you any didn't punches hold back. about it because nope, nope. it's like the second you guys are on the screen, you're like, oh, finally, some people we can like relate to and we can like and we really? can yeah because yeah. everyone every other character just like you know even like like tom cody like he's the cool tough guy he's mm -hmm. the hero but he's also like knocking diane lane out hit her in he the just face like punches her in the face and you're like <laughs> and he's like rude you know you do that today no right, right? everybody's <laughs> everybody's rude you know rick moranis is just insufferable <laughs> <laughs> like Billy Fish, the character. He's a jerk. He's a jerk. You know, so yeah, every was, character, character was a jerk. Yeah, every character is basically, you know, just just there there is no there's no middle ground to them. It's just kind of yeah, like Yeah, nobody's really yeah. nice. Nobody's nope. nice. Nobody's Except nice. For you guys. Except for us. <laughs> yep. Except for you guys. And we got kidnapped. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yes. Against your will. Yes, and you're nice throughout the whole thing. And by the end, we're like, oh yeah. 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 Let's do our let's do our moves and whatnot. And it's, yeah. It's amazing. So Michael came on and he told he told the story about how when in the scene when he's hijacking your bus mm -hmm. and you were driving that bus mm -hmm. and you were literally driving that bus mm -hmm. as yes. an actor. Yeah. And he talked about, you know, having to jump out in front and basically stop the bus yeah. and having some some concerns <laughs> about it. He was like, he was like, well, that's Stoney. Stoney's not a, a driver, you know, and Walter was saying, you know, oh, no, no, he's good. He's good. And I, wanna, I would love to hear your perspective of that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I kind of remember it. I kind of remember it. I'm, I think I was a little nervous that I, you know, wouldn't put on the brakes <laughs> hard enough. And bus brakes aren't like yeah. you know regular car brakes. Right. No, they, right. Yeah. It's not it was, like brakes. It was a little, yeah. was a little nerve wracking. I didn't yeah. want to hit that guy. <laughs> <laughs> you and need you a special see, license driving bus. He got over there. Yeah. You can see. Yes. Yeah. He, but he said it was perfect. He said it was perfect. It was yeah. as if you know you broke and he stopped. It was like he stopped the bus. Yeah. Right. I always make make sure I try to do do it right as much as I can. So yeah, I didn't want to. Especially that in guy. that moment. Oh yeah. Oh man. And he was off of editing the cruiser. So he was like yeah. really big, the studio. Yeah. You know, this was supposed to be a trilogy. Yes. Yeah. 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 And it, it would have been nice. Again, yeah. Sorrell. That would have been cool. The Sorrells would have oh, been episode two. I know we would have been in it. You know you would have crushed yeah. that yeah. stuff. Yeah. That world. Walter loved us. I'm just saying it would make a great TV series now. Everything's going to TV now, but <clears throat> who knows? Everyone listening yep. to this potentially, you know, down the road. I never thought I would see Star Wars become the TV series stuff that it's become now. Obi Wan yeah. Kenobi just Everything. came out. I didn't. I've never thought that would happen. Well, finally, our generation is making the content that everyone's seeing now, mm -hmm. right? And and I think, you know, the '80s were such a nostalgic time for us that the, the what came out of the '80s, the children of that era are now making the stuff that they loved, mm -hmm. right? So the neon and the and, and the, the bright colors and, and the fashion and just the music, everything's hitting and it's now coming back into fashion. So science fiction like Star Wars or whatever, that's coming back into the fold. I love that. I love that. I love that something like Stranger Things is spotlighting a artist like Kate Bush and mm -hmm. like young people are like, who's this Kate Bush person? You know, and they go, oh, whoa, blowing my mind. Yeah. So hopefully with Streets of Fire, you know, the Sorrells. Like that gets more into fashion. I can dream about you is such a great song. It's mm -hmm. such a beautiful song. Let me give you a little backstory on that on that song. I can dream about you. Yeah. Please do. Okay, Dan Hartman obviously wrote that song. Yeah. Um, I'm sure he didn't mind doing it, but I think at first they wanted to see if we could actually do the song. Okay. And then what ended up happening is the song was so good. And on that soundtrack was phenomenal. Yep. Yeah. That yep. entire soundtrack. That entire soundtrack. Was phenomenal. Yep. And so Jimmy Iovine mm -hmm. was the guy behind it. And you know how- Legendary big, producer. You know, Jimmy Iovine. Yep. And back then, you know, he wasn't the Jimmy Iovine that he is now. Yeah. But he was still a pretty powerful guy. Mm -hmm. And so he was in charge of that soundtrack. And so uh, per discussion that I had with Walter Hill, he told me, he goes- the studio and the record label have decided that 
the song would be a bigger hit if a white performer performed it as mm. opposed to a black sort of doo-wop group. Mm. So it made sense. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, that's unfortunately the way you I know, guess, it is. Yeah. But yeah, but I mean, that's what their thinking was and that's what did, that's what happened. So Dan Hartman went on and, and did the song um, and put the record out under him. I wonder so if this we, was the 90s when Boys to Men came out and kind of that hip hop r and <clears throat> you know. A lot of that stuff happened or got brought back, if you will, because of us. Yeah. Rick James, who was a really close friend of mine, um, he had come out to L.A. So every time he'd come out to L.A., it was me and a, you know, a few other people. We'd always go hang out with Rick, go to the clubs and yep. stuff. Just so you know, I never did drugs, ever. <laughs> You heard that. They would always yeah. talk me, try to talk yeah. me into it. Like, for you, man. Yeah. Because, come on, Stoney Jackson. <laughs> Your name is Stoney. <laughs> you? You're too sober. He would always call me Stoney Jackson. He rarely would call me Stoney. Sometimes if he's like, Stoney, he would you know, yell at me or something to come over. But I always go, call me Stoney Jackson. <laughs> Stoney Jackson never yeah, got but, stoned. But um, Rick had started a group. He told me, he says, man, I loved you in that movie. I love what you did. I love that group. He wanted Everything. to do a doo-wop group. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. he started a doo-wop group. He went back to Buffalo, put together these guys, and called them Process and the Do-Rags. Look it up. Process and the Do-Rags. Pro okay. Process and the Do-Rags. Okay. Obviously, you didn't know much about it, so yeah. it didn't do that great. But yeah, he did that based off of Streets of Fire wow. completely. He told me he was going to do it, and he did it. And then when I saw him again, I got mad at him. I said, why didn't you put me in the group? Right. Come on. Yeah, yeah I was I was yeah. mad with him. Where, are, are you a singer? Like, do you, have you, have you... I can sing. I'm not a great singer, but okay. I, I, can, I can sing. I can hold it a little bit. I used to do the singing on um, The White Shadow. Yeah, yeah. The shower songs and stuff. Yeah, I totally. To, yeah, I was nice. the lead singer there when I got on that show. Nice. Yeah, there's always something, uh, an, an energy about you that had this performer, on stage performer energy mm -hmm. always about you. Yeah. Everything. Like you radiated off the screen, you know? So I'm like, so, something more than just acting. It was like yeah. the, the music side too. So... No, it's funny you say that because when I got the insiders, you know, I had the big giant Jerry Curl. You yep. see the picture right there. Got the picture, and, yep. And the earrings dangling everywhere. And and um I used to get compared to Prince a lot. Totally. And Definitely so when when I got the insiders with um with um uh, Nicholas Focus. Campbell. Yep. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> so um we were getting called in all the all the papers the and original. stuff and all the um the press, uh Bowie and Prince. Prince and Bowie. Totally. Yeah. I love that show. I, I wish it had, uh, I think because there was so much music in it, a la Miami Vice, mm -hmm. you know, maybe the licensing is what keeps it from not being on DVD now or whatever. It only lasted for, you know, 13 episodes or so. It's 16. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But it's a great show. Great premise. It was, it was, it, that was one of the funnest projects I've ever worked on. Really? It was great. So, so take us through that. Like, did, how'd that come about? They did a... Universal did a pilot called Dark Horse, and it was mainly just Nicholas Campbell in it. He had somewhat of a sidekick. There was an actor named Randy Brooks okay. who was kind of his sad sidekick, um, but he wasn't like an equal partner in the show. So they did that pilot, mm -hmm. and then um, they didn't pick it up. So they came back and, and re-looked at it, and they said, we want to do this. This was when Miami Vice hit yeah. that first season. Yeah. yeah. So you had Philip Michael Thomas mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, Don Johnson as yep. like the two partners. Yep. So Universal also produced Miami Vice, but it was for NBC. Yeah. This is for ABC. So Universal said, you know what? ABC came to them and said, hey, we want to redo this show because 
They wanted to. Everybody jumps on. If a show's successful, other networks come on and, and basically copycat it. Totally. So ours was yeah. sort of like that too. So ABC said, we want to make it a, a team. We want to make them a partnership like Miami Vice. Mm-hmm. So that's when I came in and started auditioning. Nicholas Campbell and I had just filmed a movie with Leon Isaac Kennedy mm. down in Miami in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, what was the name? Oh, it's called Knights of the City. Yep. So we were down there for like a few months, and that's where I got to know Nicholas Campbell. And um, very cool premise, by the yeah. way. Yeah, oh, that city. Knights. You saw that? Yeah, yeah. Oh back in God. the day, I yeah. think they showed it at the New Beverly Cinema. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Way back when. Oh wow! Wow. Because they they do they do like a grindhouse night, and Leon Isaac Kennedy, I believe he was there mm. maybe for penitentiary because I I know he did that as well, mm-hmm. but. Leon Isaac Kennedy, who was just a New York ninja, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. Anyways, they showed that, and I was just like, "This the movie changed my life." Leon, it. great Leon, changed man, your life. I, I, cha- like blew my mind. Is what I did. <laughs> yeah. Didn't change my life. It blew my mind. mind. Blew like, my mind. How did you change it? What direction did <laughs> because you? Because I became yeah. a rapper. Now I'm yeah. kidding. <laughs> Leon uh, was also a good friend of mine because you meet get meet a lot of actors when you're auditioning of and stuff, and you're yeah. in that yeah. circle. You like meet everybody, and Leon and I were pretty good friends. And he and my agent at that time were really good friends. And he was going to do this movie, Nights of the City. And he went to my agent to try to help him cast the movie. Okay. So one day I was going, I always used to go hang out at, with my agent back then. And um, he was off of Sunset Boulevard. So he used to always go over there almost every day, just hang out in there and stuff. See girls all kinds of stuff. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I ran into Leon. I was like, what's up, man? What are you doing up here? And I didn't know. He was putting together this movie, and David was like kind of helping him. And he goes, I want you in the movie. There was no part written for me at all. Nothing. Whoa. So he goes, don't even worry about that, Stone. Just we're going <laughs> to come. Worry about we're going to do a deal. We're going to yeah. put you in the movie. Get there. And basically, any line and every line that I had in the movie with all the scenes, I would just ad lib, throw in stuff. And oh, that, that's that great. was how I ended up being in that movie. That's great. That's and was down amazing. there in Miami for three months, man. Wow. And you can imagine how awesome that was. Uh, three oh, months of just ad libbing oh, into man. scenes. Yeah. In the 80s. Wow. Girls, girls, girls everywhere, man. It was nuts. That was so cool. He's still like in the eighties. Yeah, go down there now you're like, hey, you got it. You got it. I was just there. We'll watch it. I was just there. Um. So wait. So okay. Yeah. So on. I was going to go back to. Is that what you? Well, yeah. Getting back to the insiders, right? As well, because because so you do this movie, Night yeah. in the City. So that's where I knew Nicholas. Yeah. And so you're Bowie. We're done. <laughs> finished filming. We come back to Los Angeles. I get a call from my agent. Hey, you got an audition to go. Uh, producer session, um, for this new pilot that they're doing. And I go, okay. So I get the material and it's like these two big, huge scenes with like a lot of dialogue in it, right? Between me and the lead character. Yeah. And I had no idea it was Nicholas. Oh. So I go to Universal and you know, the, they call it the Black Tower. Yep. So I, yep. Go, <laughs> I go to the tower and I'm sitting out there waiting to go in. And then uh, Leonard Hill was our executive producer of the, of the Insiders. And there's probably maybe like four or five other people in there. When I walk in the room, Nicholas is sitting in a chair, right? Okay. And so I go in, I look, and he sees me. So we're both kind of shocked. Now, he may have known Stoney Jackson was next on the list. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. But when, yeah, you know, as a matter of fact, he did know that I was coming through the door. Okay. So when I walk through the door, he's looking at me, I'm looking at yeah. him and just totally ignore everybody. He jumps yeah. up out the chair. I run over there and we yeah. just grab yeah. each other. Just yeah, hugging. That's me. awesome. Like, That's there, awesome. With the and so we get through all that little bit. Everybody's in there laughing and stuff. So then they, um, Linda Hill proceeds to start telling me what's going on with this show. So 
that must must have taken like 10 minutes. I was in there for a long time before I even started reading. Wow. So then they say, you okay, you guys ready? I go, okay. So I got my sides in my hand and stuff. I decide, you know what? Back then, people weren't off off script or off book. You weren't sides. right for auditions. You weren't right. expected yeah, to be people off book. Were, yeah. 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 Not like it is today. Yeah. 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 You go in there now looking at your pages, you may as well leave because mm-hmm. they don't want to right? hear. It's all self-tapes now anyway. Yeah. Really oh, it's awful. Yeah. So- um, yeah, so he and I started reading. I, I still had the papers in my hand, but I didn't have them. And there was just this natural chemistry between he and I, this banter yeah. was going on yeah. in this scene. And so when it was finished, I mean, it was just like this weird vibe in the room. I just had this weird vibe in my heart that, damn, I'm going to get this. Yeah, you felt it. Yeah, yeah I just yeah. felt it. And so everybody's like, man, that was great. That was great. I swear, I don't even know. That day, I got a call back. They want to see you again. They want to see you again. Nice. I go, okay. Then I went back, uh, met with them again, read again. Go back home, get another call. They want to put you on tape. They actually want to set up. Doing these kind of screen (laughs) tests, they don't do anymore. These were like back in the 40s, 50s screen test kind of thing. They said they want to actually film you and Nicholas, as if you were actually shooting yeah. the show. Awesome. I'm still That's auditioning. Yeah. This is awesome. Yeah. And yeah. they paid me for it because yeah. it was like a day of work. Yeah. So went in and we shot these scenes with he and I. And so um, I remember I had to go back again and audition for the network. Yeah. I had to do that about three or four times with the network. I'm like, oh my God, yeah. just give me the part already. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. at this particular point you know you're just tired of auditioning yeah. right and you're thinking you, you start thinking too much mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it and when you do that you don't come off as well yeah mm-hmm. but anyway i got through it and i end up getting it here's a kicker i had auditioned for stir crazy okay remember that richard Pryor movie yeah gene wilder and stuff. right yeah. yeah they were gonna do a series about stir crazy oh i auditioned for that that pilot that was also i think universal okay okay and I think it was CBS. I'm not sure. But uh, Larry Riley, he's dead now. But do you remember who he is? N- not on the top of my Yeah, head. look him up. Okay. He, he, he did a lot of work. His name was Larry Riley. Um, I don't remember why he passed away or how, but yeah, he, he's, he's dead now. But he was playing, um, was it him and me? I don't know. I, I, I know that I got that pilot. And then... Um, Universal came to us, ABC came to us, and they said, we we want Stoney for insiders. Next thing you know, money starts going up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 All right. Cool. Bidding war. Yeah. Primetime TV And it was series. nothing planned. I just yeah. happened to get both at the same time. Nice. Yep. So um, I ended up doing Insider Pilot. That series did get picked up, but I think it only lasted like three or four weeks on the air. And it's mm. a shame because it's a really good, it's a really fun show. You know, was that the, the insiders? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about Stir Crazy did get picked up, oh, but it only did. lasted for about four episodes. Okay, ours ours was on for the whole first por- uh, part of the season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you said, sixteen yeah. episodes. And this is this is what happened. I think with with the show, from what I heard from uh, Leonard Go- um, Goldberg, who was our uh, Leonard Hill, who was our executive producer. Mm-hmm. Um, ABC was going through a transition. They got bought out. Mm. So the guy who was the president of ABC Insiders was like his baby. Okay, oh, he yeah. was the president. His, what was his name? Lou Ehrlich or something. And um, our show was like out of all the shows for ABC, that was his baby. Mm. He loved Insiders for some reason. And so when that transition happened, and I think Cap Cities took over ABC. Okay, somebody took over. And when that happened, they got rid of him. Bye bye, babies. So yeah. our show, yeah. I don't yeah. want to say it got put on a back burner because they gave us like the best time slot you could have. Yeah. Yeah. Which was opening up Fall Guy and Hotel. I mean, mm. come on. I mean, no, actually we we took over Fall Guy. Lee Majors wasn't happy about that because we took his time <laughs> slot. So we opened up for um what was the show that came on after that? It was uh I know Hotel was like the Hotel and know, Dynasty. Zach, you were watching. Dynasty. You were watching Hotel and night. Dynasty. What was on? Dynasty yeah. It was oh, us, yeah. Hotel and Dynasty. That was like the big night for television <laughs> of all the networks. Yeah, this is back in the day when yeah. literally you just had those network TV shows, and that was it. That was it. 
you know, yep. wasn't. Uh, and we opened. We 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 uh, moved Fall Guy. Yeah, we made it. Well, it was, and the premise was different from Miami Vice, where it was you know reporter mm-hmm. ex con, and you guys are linking up, taking on you know yeah. different aspects. It wasn't Miami Vice. It made it might have had a little bit of that template, and the music though kicked ass, and the opening theme. The Genesis song, you know, is such Phil a... Phil Collins, oh yeah. My gosh, it's so good. It's such a great way it's to start bang, that. Bang, bang, bang. Yeah. 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 Oh, so... I, I want to backtrack a little bit back going back to Streets of Fire mm-hmm. because you were saying uh, before we started rolling that 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 shoot was a long shoot. Yeah. Like you were contracted for what, 23 weeks you yeah. said? But you didn't shoot that whole time. No, we didn't. And it was cold as hell when you were doing location yeah. shots in yeah. Chicago. Yeah, we went to uh, Chicago because they wanted the authenticity of the L trains. Yeah. And, um, but you know, remember the look of that movie? Yes. It was like a futuristic, but it was like 50s, 80s. Dated. 50s, yeah, was, 80s, and then other little pockets yeah. of like the 20s hybrid. with with Cody's yeah. look, you know? It had that old look, but it was like mm-hmm. kind of set in the mm-hmm. future. Dark that was really and, yeah. cool. And Walter Hill has a, such a distinct vision with his movies, you yeah. know, where uh, like The Warriors, for example, he, he loves the trains, you know, mm-hmm. the train going to Coney Island mm-hmm. and whatnot. So, yeah, that Streets of Fire had a distinctive comic book look to it. And then that's why being on set was perfect because yeah. the way it looked. But then obviously he's doing shots in Chicago with the yeah. train, right? So we did that. I think we were in Chicago for like maybe four weeks, four to six weeks. That's a long time on. too. Man, dude, yeah. Walter Hill shoots like in like a page a day. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Right. Right. Which you can't really do now anyway. Oh, yeah. man. No. But now you got to shoot like seven to 10, maybe even more pages. Right. But, but no wonder they're day. concerned about going over budget, you know, at a certain, right. Cause at a certain point he's like, nope, we're just going to. Hey, that budget was huge. Yeah, and it yeah. was Walter Hill. Mm-hmm. So yeah. man, yeah, he took his time. He was yeah. on fire at that time. No pun intended. Yeah. You know, yeah, he because was. He, he's, his movies had at that point in the eighties, he was just cranking out one hit. At, well, <clears> whether it was a, whether it was a, a box office hit or not was a different story, but his uniqueness, mm-hmm. every one of his movies, whether you like them or not, are very different from one another. You can't go, you can't say, oh, that's, you know, 48 hours is yeah. just like blah, blah, blah. No, yeah. he, he broke the mold with 48 hours, that buddy comedy thing, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. Streets of Fire is a rock and roll action musical. Yeah. Like you, you put all those together and people go, wait, I don't. Okay, who's in it? You know, like this. You don't see movies like this. You don't. Yeah. You, there's never been another movie like this. No, in my opinion, almost that almost that entire cast became like huge. Then it, it's it's yeah. one of the yeah. best casts, top to bottom. Mm-hmm. Like every single person in that movie brings their A game. Yeah, you know, down to Bill Paxton, small little role, yeah. but he nailed it. Bill Paxton, um, leaving. That was Willem Dafoe's so first movie. Yep. Yep. Yeah, he did yeah. done a movie called The Loveless. Um, uh, I think either before or right after that. But yeah, he like carved out that niche, you know. Yep. And yeah, Lee Ving being a total badass. Amy Madigan, yeah, Amy Rick Ma- Moranis, right? Yeah. E.G. Daly, um, Diane Lane. She was already like a star. Yeah, right. she was a kid though. Yeah, and then here you are doing yeah. these. I, I was a musician for a while. I don't really do it anymore. But but being on stage was such a rush. I love being in front of an audience and and seeing you guys performing in that movie, even if it's acting. It just felt so authentically genuine, you know, with mm-hmm. the with the crowd. You filmed it at the Wiltern, right? Yeah, yeah. Did. So w- was that a was that a challenging process to uh, to do that scene? Uh, no, it wasn't challenging. It was fun. Yes, it, it was a lot of fun, and yeah. they had a ton of extras. Yeah, he shot, like, it feels authentic. It, it really, as we were shooting it, it felt like a real concert. Yeah, I bet. It felt like a concert. The music was blaring, and and when we went on stage, and it was crazy because it was like, when we, when we, we weren't a real group. Yeah. But it felt yeah. like we were 
a real group, mm -hmm. when we went out there and everybody was waiting for us to come out to yeah. perform this yeah. song. Yeah. All the, I mean, hundreds of extras. Yeah. Who hires hundreds of extras? You just right. don't, Not now. You don't do that. Right. Yeah. Now, now it's digitized. and Yeah, know. there was hundreds yeah. of extras and everybody was out there just waiting for us to come out and perform this song. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. It was weird, man. The, the, the vibe, the feeling. The style, that, the was, style. I mean, oh, we, we've amazing. we've said really that uh, you know the the last seven minutes of, of Streets of Fire is just like the best. It's just the best on film because it's you know it's not only are you guys on stage, but you know, uh, Tom and Ellen Aim or Michael and Diane are having that moment right mm -hmm. where he's like leaving her, and then she goes out, and tonight is what it means to be young, and it's just like it's just so it's just such a mood. Yeah, the whole thing. And so to hear you say, yeah, like felt like a, it, I mean, it was, it was it a concert. Did. It really felt yeah. like, it really felt like we were in a concert yeah. and we were the, the group. And I mean, the reaction, yeah, that wasn't fake yeah. from the people yeah. that were watching it. When we did yeah. the first take and we got to do the whole thing up front yeah. right away. Right. We got to do the entire performance from start to finish. So everybody out yeah. there in the crowd was like, oh my God. And that song, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Your your moves, like your energy, is so it's so yeah. infectious because it, you yeah. just seem like you're just having a great time. Talk about the moonwalk for a second. Yeah, yeah. My friend who I met, his name was Mister Freeze. He was in uh, Splash Dance. He remember the guy with the umbrella. He was a break dancer. Okay. And remember the guy with the, when the umbrella pops out and he starts moonwalking in Flash Dance. In Flash Dance. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Okay. That was him, Mr. Freeze. And so I got okay. him to kind of teach me how to do it. At that particular time, too, there was a guy named Jeffrey Daniel who was one of the leads in um, Shalimar, that singing group Shalimar. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. He and I were really close friends. And as a matter of fact, we were, I think at the time we were like roommates because I had a place. He was married to Stephanie Mills, the singer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And oh, they got into a horrible fight. Oh. And then he left. One day I came back home, drove down my driveway. I had a back staircase that went upstairs because um, I lived in a duplex off of um, in the Fairfax area. Okay. And um, so I pulled down the long driveway. I got out the car. I go up the back staircase. And he's sitting there with all this luggage. Oh, no. He had moved out. <laughs> oh, no. Moving so he, in. Yeah, he came in, and, and that's when he <laughs> became my roommate because I had like two bedrooms in that place. It was big. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, I'm like, of course, man. So um, anyway, he was like chore choreographing for Michael Jackson. Okay. All right. And so Michael was trying to get him. Um, Streets of Fire had come out. I did the moonwalk in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Yep. So Michael saw it. Wanted to learn it. No way. Jeffrey you was taught to, Michael Jackson the moonwalk? Is that what you're saying? I, is that what you're saying? I was there. I don't want to is say- Is that what I'm you're the, saying? No, I'm not saying that. That's no, what you're true. saying is if you hadn't done it, yeah. it wouldn't have happened. You're maybe. saying the moonwalk- Michael wanted to learn how to pop. Jeffrey was like the pop oh locking my God. expert from Soul Train, because okay. that's how Shalimar started. And he was doing oh the, the moonwalk. Back then, it was called the backslide. It wasn't called the moonwalk. Okay. It was the backslide. And um, uh, Jeffrey taught me really how to perfect it. So that's when I performed in the movie. Michael saw it. He goes, oh, I love it. I want to do it. <laughs> so, <laughs> you guys, let me tell you this something. Amazing. This Michael is amazing. Michael Jackson, yeah. he, um, Jeffrey taught him. I was there through wow. a lot of those rehearsals. And um, that's how I ended up in Beat It. I was just going to say. That's how I ended up <laughs> in Beat It. Um, I, I'd known the family for a long time. I love that. And... Um, so I used to go down to the rehearsals and stuff. Bob Giraldi, who directed it, but somehow knew who I was. And I was just an actor. I wasn't trying to be in a video. Yeah. <laughs> I was just yeah. an actor. You're the guy that taught Michael yeah, Jackson so about the movie. So we'd be hanging out in, um, <laughs> in uh, Michael's trailer on the set. So I'm down there with him and, um, and Jeffrey. And we're in his trailer. So Bob Giraldi comes in. And then um, he recognized me. Mm -hmm. And it was weird because I'm like, you know, I wasn't some big star or anything like that, but he recognized me for some odd reason. And he goes, man, maybe we can get this guy to be in the movie. And then Michael says, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm an actor, yeah. man. I wasn't trying to be in right. a music video. It's right. like, you know, right. kind of like an extra or whatever. And so. Yeah, because that, during that time, this was a different time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they were like, man. You should think about it. You should think about it, Stoney. Think about it. Yeah. I said, okay, I'll think about it. So then I talked to Jeffrey. And Jeffrey was like, dude, 
this is going to be huge. It's going to be iconic. I had, yeah, I mean, iconic it's Michael video. Jackson's yeah. already like yeah. Michael Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, man. All right. So um, Bob was like, cool. So he just started throwing me at him. Stoney, come over here. And he would throw me in this, this shot. If you watch the video, it, yeah. there's no like rhyme or reason to where I am in the video. I'm like all over the place. Like one second, you'll see me here and then there'll be another shot. And I'm over there. <laughs> I'm walking down the street. <laughs> it just makes no sense. That's amazing. But it was oh, Bob Giraldi going, here, go, go in there. Get, yeah. In. yeah, it was weird. Wow. The next thing I know, that's like one of the things I'll probably get recognized most for is for being me. in the Michael Jackson that's beat it video. so funny. With no line. <laughs> but you had it. You but had I had it. it, and man, I'm so glad I did it. It was so fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild, man. Yeah, but but yeah. so when people recognize you, they go, "Oh, you're the guy from this, or you're the guy from that." I mean, do you take it as a compliment, or do you go, "Well, what do you know me for now?" Is, but does, I, does it matter to you? I'm like the low key guy. Everybody wants to go, "Hey, yo, Stony Jackson from Lydia." I'm like, "No, don't do that. Don't do that." I like to stay low key, mm -hmm. undercover. I'm not like you know want to be all out in the spotlight, although I do enjoy acting and I know you're on television and you're in a movie and people see you, but I don't know. It just never hit me like that. Like I need to be this star. I I've yeah. never felt that way. So it, it's weird. That's kind of how I live. You know, I don't really care about being the big, huge star person. Well, I mean, that that speaks a lot to your character and to your upbringing, perhaps. Because, yeah, you know, yeah, just maybe. having that, the humbleness, like even now when you're describing, well, you know, uh, I, I, I don't know why he wanted me there. I don't know why, mm. like that, that's a, yeah. that's a level of humility and humbleness that is such appreciated mm. sincerely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and the fact that you're on our show and talking about your <clears> career <throat> is huge for us because we're obviously big fans, you know, well, and, thanks, and, man. and everything, it's like every little thing talking about trespass, you know, just jumping ahead to when you made trespass again with Walter Hill mm -hmm. and you're doing a movie with. Two of probably the biggest rap stars at the time, Ice yeah, Cube, Ice Cube. And, and Ice T. Do you know he he wanted me for the Ice T role? Really, Walter did. Yeah, he brought me in. He I, I've done like four or five projects with Walter. Okay, he, uh, yeah, he and I have this really cool relationship. He always liked me. He always like put me to work. I did Wild Bill with him. Yeah, yep. Um, awesome. Tales from the Crypt. Yep. Um, I was supposed to do Undisputed, but again, um. Because black actors didn't really have huge names. The studios never saw us as being able to put butts in seats mm. as opposed to how it is now. Yeah. Yeah. So when I was coming up, I had to audition pretty much for everything yeah. I ever got. You're right. Yeah. Walter Hill never made me audition for anything. He would say, hey, meet me at Paramount, take you to lunch. I go, okay. He'd tell me I'd go there, studio, That's we'd fantastic. go in the commissary on the yeah. nice side, because yeah. you know there's yeah. two yeah. sides. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> I'd be sitting in there, man, and like all these big stars and big ass producers yeah. and yeah. stuff, and like, man. Yeah. So he would always do that for me. Call me up. Hey, Stoney, yeah. meet me at Paramount, go on lunch. So I always knew after the first time that um that uh he had something for me. So when whenever yeah, he would call yeah. me like that, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, lunch. Man, get Walter to lunch. Something. Yep. And yeah. working with Walter, you yeah. always know it's going to be big time. Yep. So, um, uh, which movie were we talking well, about? We're talking about Trespass, Trespass. But oh yeah, yeah. So what happened was he wanted me to to do the Ice T role. Okay. Uh, King James. Yeah. And then the studio said we need bigger names. Mm. And at the time, the rappers had the bigger names. Yes. I mean, ninety. What is it? Ninety two. Yeah. I think we're talking. And so. the rappers yep. could put butts in seats yep. because of the music. You know, music is so much bigger than movie stars, mm. unless you become like the Tom Cruises or the Will Smiths or whatever. Right. Yes. But um, yeah, music, everybody, and it's universal. So it's not like um, yeah, you know, people in the United States only see your movies. Everybody Everyone's across the globe yep. hears a song. Right. Yep. And right. loves it. So right. the studio said, ah, we rather, we we want some bigger names. So they ended up getting Ice Cube and Ice T. And Ice T had just done New Jack City a couple yeah. of years prior. So, yeah. yeah. So he was like like on a roll mm -hmm. then. And mm -hmm. um, so Walter called me back in. He goes, hey, Stoney, this time it wasn't lunch. He just said, come to my office. Oh, so no. he told me what happened. <laughs> and I go, shoot. He goes, don't worry about it. I'm still going to have yeah. you in the movie. 
So he wrote that part for me. It really? wasn't originally yeah. written in the movie at all. It was kind of like that Leon Isaac Kennedy thing, except the difference was Walter actually put it on paper. Mm. So he he wrote lines right, in right. there, yeah. So then at the same time, when we got on set, Walter pretty much, he said, look, I don't care what you guys do, just kind of stick to the core of what I've written. Mm. But I don't care about the ad-libs. I don't care about this, That's that, great. and the other. That's and great. so I got a funny story. There was this little old white lady who was our script supervisor on Trespass. Remember, this movie's all guys. There's like no women. Yeah. There are Walter no women, did yeah. something smart. He said, okay, all the stand-ins that we're going to hire are going to be all women. So there were women on the set. So you got like 11 main characters in this thing, and all the women are stand-ins. <laughs> So it kind of like, it was a good idea because yeah, when you yeah. got too much testosterone yeah. in one room, yeah. mm-hmm. it yeah. can get crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So that kind of, that, <laughs> yeah. that kind of helped a lot. Oh, that's funny. So I remember this little old white lady, she was so sweet and you would never expect this. I don't know. Can you use foul language? Yeah, totally. This? We can. Yes. All right. So this is what, this is what I'm going to say. Yeah. This little old white lady, she was real quiet. She was sitting over there and man, she knew her business. She's working for Walter Hill. So, you know, she's got to be on point. Right. Mm-hmm. So, um, <laughs> We get into rehearsing a scene, me, Ice, all the guys. But most of the dialogue was coming from me, Ice, and um, and um, Q. But Ice had most of the dialogue in this particular scene. So we're on set, we come in for rehearsal. So Ice is like, yo, yeah, fuck it. We're going to kill the motherfucker. We're going to do that, da, da, da. So then um, <laughs> we go, okay, rehearsal's up again. We go do another rehearsal. So action on rehearsal. So Ice starts saying it, and he gets his line. And he goes, uh, what's the line? And little old white lady gets something. She goes, yo, motherfucker, I told you that. <laughs> <laughs> She's Everybody looked and mm, fell out on the yeah. floor, man. It was funny. Mm, yeah, that's <laughs> It was so funny. <laughs> that's awesome. Little white lady, man. It was, yeah, it was hilarious. It was one of those you had to be there moments. Course, no, 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 wow. no. But As opposed to me telling you about it. But man, you would, yeah, you would have died. What's funny died. about that, though, is like I could see Walter after that going, that was really good. Why, why we should put her in the movie now? <laughs> Let's put a part. I don't, man, I remember Walter's face. He could not believe what he just heard from her. I bet. Yeah. I bet. Verbatim. That's hilarious. Yo, motherfucker, I said kiss my and, and she threw in the with in the her, attitude. Every, was she in, with the attitude too? She was just Swagger? reading it. She yeah, was reading yeah. it. Okay, okay. <laughs> but she read it verbatim. <laughs> it wasn't like I would like you to <laughs> Oh man. Was the was the shoot challenging? Yeah. We did we did our own stuff on there, man. We yeah, we did our own stuff. You know, breaking down doors. I had to break down a door. I had no idea this door was gonna be a real thick wooden door. Oh shit. And yeah. I had a ha- uh, an axe. Yeah. Yeah. And when I hit it the first time I hit it during the scene, the shot, I was like, damn, it's a real door. I'm thinking like, you know, <laughs> it's right, a studio gonna, movie. Yeah, so I'm gonna be able yeah. to break yeah. through this door it's with gonna one be scored yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Dude, I yeah. thought I was gonna tear through that door with the first <laughs> yeah. chop. Yeah. Yeah. It took yeah. me about 20 chops trying Check to get through me that out. thing. <laughs> Boom. I was like, wow, that's, that's some oh, real that's stuff. Funny. But yeah, all this stuff was cool. There was, remember that one scene where um where I was pretending to be the cop? Yeah. Yes. And there was a slight incline. And me and this other actor, Byron Minns, uh, were in this scene. And um, he was at the car. So I had to run and get in the car. So I was supposed to run up the hill and run behind the car and then open the door and get in. I just had this feeling. I said, boom, 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 boom. And I ran up and I knew back then I was really athletic. I was in shape. I said, I could jump over this damn car. No. Yeah. And I had on a police belt and all this heavy equipment and yeah. stuff. And so I said, I could still jump over this car. So I said, Walter, <laughs> I said, listen, I got an idea. He goes, what? I said, can I run instead of going around the car, which to me kind of takes too long if yeah, you're running yeah. from people that are shooting right. at you? Yeah. I said, can I run and dive over the car and get in? Yeah. And he looked at me, he goes, can you do that? <laughs> and I said, yeah. He goes, nah, I don't think so, man. I don't want you to get hurt. I don't yeah, want anything yeah. to happen because all the insurance stuff. and all Yeah, that. of course. Yeah. He's like, ah, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. And it was, uh, what kind of, the, the car was, um, uh, what was that? Um, God, I can't think of the name of the car, but it, it was a high-end car. Yeah, yeah. And so I go, I can do it, man. Just let me do it. He goes, okay. So rehearsal. I come flying up the hill. I dive over the top of the car. I dove so hard, I had to actually stick my hand back to grab the the other side of the car like this so yeah. I didn't fly oh, too far. Man. Yeah, yeah. So it slowed me down. Yeah. Yep. And then I opened the car and got in. And Walter was like, <laughs> everybody on this set was like, 
But he couldn't believe I just what did that. that. Yeah, I dove over the whole car. Wow. Yeah, so he left it in there. He goes, yeah, we're going to do it. <laughs> yeah, like, good, because I can't I had to do now. it like yeah, 20 man. times, yeah. man. <laughs> By that 20th time, time. I'm like, <clears throat> I could, right. I could barely dive anymore. <laughs> But yeah, he kept it in there. I need a mineral That was water. an ad lib. That's, yeah, that's great. That's such a good yeah. point, though, because yeah. he's a guy who's doing tons and tons of takes. Yeah. Every time you're like, yeah, I can do it once. Oh, right. We got to yeah. coverage. If coverage. it's something that's cool, Walter, yeah, he, he'll he he'll let you do it, man. He's, he's so cool. Yeah, well, I've, I've seen many of his movies screened at the theater in Santa Monica, and he's been there and done a Q&A and whatnot. And just super, like, I, clearly has a passion for what he does. Mm. Uh, I love seeing the relationships he's created with the actors in his movies, the mm -hmm. writers, the the crew, the whole crew. He uses his like his crew yeah. all the time. Love that. And that's Ry Cooter, his music guy. He uses everybody all the time. He stays loyal to all these yep. people. Projects right now, you um it, it's called Sangre Negra. Sangre Negra Black Blood. And that's okay. what it means in Spanish. Okay. Um, we've been having some back and forth on that title. Um, it's a it's a really a diverse cast, but the cast is set or the story is set around a Hispanic family. Uh, Eric Estrada's in it. He yeah. plays the patriarch of this, nice. of this family. He has a couple of sons, and he has an illegitimate son with a woman he had an affair with who mm. was a black woman. So that son is mixed. So that's where the black blood comes from. Okay. That particular son is like a gangster. He's into all kinds of bad crap. He's got his oldest son, who's a, an attorney, and his youngest son um, is a, a police detective. So the police detective's son, half-brother, they don't get along. Okay. But the older brother is actually his lawyer. Mm. So they get along. So you've got that that dynamic of that family. Yeah. Yeah. So my character plays, uh, I, I play a guy who is a somewhat of an acquaintance of the, uh, the Black Blood brother. Got it. And he brings me in because he wants to try to take over this, like, mob situation where he's like the number one guy for this mobster. Mm -hmm. He wants to take over his business okay. and he needs help doing it. So he knows that my character is this crazy street guy who yeah. just, you know, pop a cap and you just, yeah. you know, if yeah. you blink wrong. Cimarron yeah. Squally, right? Yeah, Cimarron. Cimarron Squally. Yeah. Is that, is, Man, is that the you, name you, of your you character? You're doing research. Are you trying, this guy. Or are you just saying words? No, that's the name of his character. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, Zach is the, the research king I try to be, man. I try Jeez. to be. You know, we're yeah. clearly big fans of your work, so I uh, appreciate you know? it. Yeah. <laughs> Having you on our show has been huge. Uh, this has been an honor. Really Thank you for it. tripping down memory lane with us. Hey, man. Thank you, guys. I don't. I don't it's normally so like do you know this stuff. So yeah. like when you ask me, I'm like, eh, okay, all right. Well, so. I hope you had a was it worth time. it? Oh man, it was great. <laughs> you kidding me? Hey, you guys are awesome. We don't want you to leave here and be like, I'm never doing those again. Nah. Well, thank you for being on the show. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Cool. Thank, thank I you. I appreciate you having me.